Hello, my name is Andy Zambell. I'm a senior product marketing engineer at MathWorks. I've been at MathWorks for about two and a half years. Prior to joining MathWorks, I was a signal integrity engineer for about a decade where I developed high-speed connectors and cable assemblies. I was also involved in the development of industry standards such as IEEE 802.3 and OIF. Today I'll be covering CERTI's design and signal integrity analysis for USB 4.0 IBIS AMI models. Here's the agenda for today. First, I'll start off by going over the general CERTES and signal integrity workflow from MathWorks. Next, I'll show a demo of how to create a USB 4 2.0 IBIS AMI model, where I'll start in the CERTES Designer app, move to Simulink uh, to add more details to the model, and wrap up in signal integrity toolbox for quick analysis. Then I'll summarize everything, and I'll show you where to learn more. A very brief overview of the CERTES and signal integrity workflow goes as follows. Starting with CERTES toolbox, you can create IBIS AMI models of a CERTES that can then be directly exported to signal integrity toolbox. From there, you can perform pre-layout analysis of a system design. If there are any issues, you can move the entire system, stimulus, channel, and parameters back to CERTES toolbox for debugging. Another workflow that I won't talk about today but will be the subject of a future webinar is post layout verification with RF PCB toolbox. This workflow allows for the import of PCB schematics into signal integrity toolbox to verify uh, the design prior to building the PCB and for simulation to measurement correlation. So on a high level those are the typical workflows we have for the CERTES and signal integrity areas. Today I'm going to show you a demo of how to create an IBIS AMI model and use it in Signal Integrity Toolbox. So let's get started. So here we are in the CERTES Designer app. Looking around the app, you can see in the upper left here, we got the configuration area. Uh, in the top middle here, we have the different types of blocks we can add. And for each block that we have here, we have different parameters for that block. And then over here, we have add plots. So we can add a bunch of different types of plots, which will show up in this big empty area right here. So getting started for this USB 4 2.0 IBIS AMI model we want to set up, we'll start with the symbol time, which is 39.062 picoseconds, um, which corresponds to a data rate of 40 gigabits per second, or a baud rate of 25.6 gigabaud, um, since uh, USB 4 2.0 is a PAM3 uh, modulation. So let's set the modulation to PAM3 real quick. The samples per symbol per the spec is 32. The differential signaling, or I'm sorry, the signaling is differential, and the target BER is 1.57 E to the negative 8. Uh, where does that come from? Again, it comes from the spec, but it comes from right here. Um, so this conversion factor uh, is being used to go from uh, the TER of 1 e to the minus 8 to a BER of 1.57 e to the minus 8. And the conversion factor is 11 bits over 7 trits. Uh, again, this all comes directly from the standard. Okay, so the standard has a bunch of different uh, equalization that we're gonna add. So let's start adding some blocks. So we're gonna add an FFE block to the transmitter. We're going to move over to the receiver and we're going to add two CTLE blocks, it's a two stage CTLE. So we're gonna add two blocks. And a DFE block. So moving left to right, we'll start with the FFE. The FFE is, has two precursor taps and one postcursor tap. So we're at four in total. Um, the mode we're going to set to fixed, 
and normalize the taps as well. Move it over one block, the analog out. We're gonna set the voltage to 0.4 volts. I'm gonna set the rise time to uh, 7.8125 picoseconds, which is the 20 to 80 percent rise time of the symbol time. The resistance is 42 and a half ohms. It's an 85 ohm spec. And the capacitance, capacitance isn't uh, specified. So we're just going to use the default settings. Moving over to the channel block. Uh, we're going to use a, a loss bottle. If we wanted to, we could import uh, S parameters and use an impulse fun or impulse response of those S parameters, but we're just going to use a, a nice simple loss model here. Uh, we're going to set the uh, channel loss to 9.5 dB. Again, this is an 85 ohm spec. And we'll set the target frequency to 12.8 gigahertz, which is the uh, Nyquist frequency of the baud rate. And moving over to the receiver, analog in. 42.5 ohm resistance and we're going to use the default uh, capacitance again. Okay, the CTLE. I'm going to add a 1 here to make it a little bit easier. And the mode. So we can choose how we the mode for the CTLE. Adapt, off, or fixed. Uh, we're going to have it adapt. Um, the specification you have your choice of combination of DC gain, AC gain, and peaking gain, but we are going to use a GPZ matrix. Um, I'll skip this gain pull zero matrix for just a second. Performance criteria. So how do you want uh, the CTLE to adapt? Uh, what do you want it to maximize or minimize? Uh, we're gonna set it to maximize the signal to noise ratio. And finally, the filter method, cascaded or parcel fraction, we're gonna use cascaded. Uh, so this gain pull zero matrix, where is this coming from? We are actually going to use this uh, MATLAB script here. Um, this will calculate and create a variable for both uh, matrices, or I'm sorry, for both CTLEs. It will have a matrix for each of the two CTLEs. Um, this one up here is for the, the high pole CTLE, and down here is for the low pole uh, CTLE. So I'm going to run this, and it'll create the two variables for me. Everything that you see in here it was pulled out of the specification. So that's where all of these values come from. And as you can see, here's the two uh, transfer functions for each of the two CTLEs. Minimize these real quick. Come back to here. So we're on CTLE1. And this will be GPZ underscore HP. And if I jump over here to the second CTLE, then again, uh, oops, CTLE2. Okay. Uh, set it to adapt, GPZ matrix, and this will be LP, low pole. So there, now they're both set up, ready to go. Finally, the DFE. The DFE actually has 12 taps. So I'm just going to create eight more taps here. Eight, 12. Okay. Okay, so the minimum and maximum tap values are set. 12 of them. Tap number one goes from 0 to 0 0.75. The rest of them, negative 0 0.2 to positive 0 0.2. Um, again, set to adapt. You have a choice of phase detector. I'm going to use a bang bang phase detector. So there we go. Everything is set up, ready to go. I'm going to add a plot here. We're going to look at, oh, we'll look at the BER plot. Everything done in the Surgis Designer app is statistical. That's why everything's gonna go fairly quickly. Um, when the next step, when we move over to Simulink, we will look at um, 
time domain plots as well. So there's the BER. Um, if I add a report as well, it'll give us the actual eye measurements, height and width as well. It'll tell us what CTLE it used for each. It'll tell us what uh, the DFE taps are. Just drag this over. Get them side by side. So there we go. Uh, so you can see the eye height, eye width, area, things like that to the two CTLEs that it used and our DFE taps that were used. Okay, before we move on, I would like to add some jitter. So per the spec, I know we're gonna use some RX and, uh, I'm sorry, random jitter and sinusoidal jitter in the TX and we're gonna use some random jitter in the RX. So I'm gonna turn all of those on and this will save us a couple seconds when we move over to Simulink by checking these boxes these reserved parameters will be added to the IBIS AMI model automatically. If we didn't have them checked, we could add them in Simulink if we wanted to. So, what are these values? Again, I'm just gonna pull these right from the specification. Everything here is in unit interval. We could change the, uh, the units if we wanted to. And as you watch, every time I add some jitter, our eye diagram is going to change. I assume everything's going to be getting worse. So these jitter values are all the maximum values per the spec. So if you watch these numbers, they're all going down. You can see the eye get a little bit smaller every time. Um, and lastly, the random jitter of the receiver. And there we go. Okay, so everything is set up and ready to go to, for us to go to Simulink. So I'm gonna go up here to export, export SERDI system to Simulink. From here, we're gonna add some more detail um, with the jitter and with the FFE as well as the CDR. Uh, since there's no time domain in the SERDI designer app, uh, the CDR doesn't really do anything. As we go to Simulink, we can add some settings for the CDR as we do our time domain uh, plots there. Okay, so here we are in Simulink. Uh, you can see, we've got a bunch of blocks here. So just kind of going around in Simulink, open up the configuration block. And the configuration block is uh, carried over everything from the configuration area uh, in the Designer app. So you can see the symbol time is the same, samples per symbol, things like that. Okay, jumping down here to the stimulus. So this is where we uh, set the stimulus for our simulation. We're gonna increase this to 50,000 symbols. Uh, waveform creation method. So we're gonna use a serial PRBS uh, uh, waveform. And we need to change the, uh, the mapping, the binary to PAM M mapping. Luckily, we have this all set up, ready to go for USB 4. So that's all done. Okay. So the transmitter going, bearing down into the transmitter, you can see the FFE. Um, so that's that. Jumping back up, our analog channel. Again, everything from our channel was carried over. Loss model, loss, impedance, things like that. All of our analog in and out models were also here. We want to look at the channel responses real quick. Impulse response, step response, pulse response. That's all there. If you uh, change your mind and you want to import an S parameter, you can do so. You just click this button and a window will open up that will allow you to import a touchstone file. So this one's just pointing to a, a default a touchstone file so you would just browse to your touchstone file and import it from here but again we're just going to continue to stick with the uh, lost bottle we have and finally going into the receiver we see our two ctles and our dfe so looking at our one ctle you can see that the the gpz 
matrix that the variable was also carried along. Visualize the response so we can look at this, um, this transfer function. And if we compare the two, uh, they look identical. So that's good. Close everything. And in the DFE, make this bigger. Again, all of our taps, tap settings, things like that carried along. Uh, the CDR, so now that we have, we're going to be doing time domain simulations. We're going to set the CDR uh, sensitivity to 5 millivolts. Everything else we're just going to leave alone. So there we go. That's set up and ready to go. Okay. One thing that needs to change for our transmitter in the, in the FFE is we need to set a bunch of values. So the spec has um, something like 40 some odd preset FFE settings. Uh, and we want to import them all into, to be able to be, to be able to use them uh, in this IMS AMI model. So to do that, uh, we need to go to its configuration and open Surdy's IMS AMI manager. There we go, opens. Um, uh, before we do that real quick, let's just take a look at this IBIS AMI manager. Um, so when we go to export it, you get your choice of what is it, what it is you want to export. So in this case, it's a transmitter receiver. Um, change the name of the actual IBIS models. We'll just call this my USB TX. Let's call it four. And again, my USB four RX. Um, uh, the corner percentage will leave the default at 10%. Um, so what type of AMI models do we want to export? We're going to do dual models instead of just get wave only or in it only. Uh, number of bits to ignore since it's a four tap FFE. We'll do four taps. Um, we will increase this to the number of bits to ignore to we'll say 30,000 bits. So we'll ignore the first 30,000 bits. We're simulating 50,000. We'll ignore the first 30,000 of them. And real quick, we'll set this to change this to my USB 4 as well. So there we go. So that's all set and ready to go. A um, quick preview of the IBIS portion of the model right here. Okay. So we want to set our set up the FFE. So how do we do that? In the uh, TX, we have the FFE here. We want to add a parameter. So we click on the FFE, click add parameter. And then we're going to give it a name and a description here. So new parameter name. We're going to call this config select. And we're going to give it a description of transmitter FFE presets. So there's that. Um, leave the usage as in, the type as integer, and the format and change to list. Um, so we're going to put the default as zero. Okay, so the list values and the list tip values. I'm going to copy them from over here. Okay, so let me stretch this out, make sure everything looks correct. It'll yell at me if I have something incorrect. So as you can see, there's uh, a total of 43 uh, different settings for the FFE. Um, so these are their values and, and you know just basically names here. Uh, so hit OK. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so all we did there were was to add placeholders for the different tap settings. We didn't actually add the tap settings quite yet. So that's what we're going to do next. So I'm going to go back up here to the TX, um, go into the init block, hit refresh, and I'm going to hit show init. So what we're going to do is add those preset FFE settings uh, for the statistical portion of the IBIS AMI model. And then we're going to do the same thing for the time domain portion of the IBIS AMI model. 
So how, how do we do this? We are going to scroll down a little bit. And in this section right down here is where we add our own uh, custom user code, which I have over here to have over here and I will paste it in. So there you go. You can see all the different cases for with all of these different uh, preset FFE tap settings that again all come directly from the standard. So now that this is done, we're going to move over and add the settings for the uh, time domain portion of the IBIS AMI model. So to do this, I'm going to go back to the TX. I'm going to hit Control U on the FFE to kind of go deeper into it. And like he's, you can see that the, here's the uh, the config select uh, parameter that we added. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a MATLAB function block, which comes out of the library browser. Simulink, user defined functions, and MATLAB function. So we're going to add that over here. Close the browser, zoom out a bunch so I can see everything. Okay, move this out of the way. Open up the MATLAB function block, and here we're going to add a function. And this function I have over here, I'm going to paste it in. It's going to look similar to what I has added earlier for uh, the statistical vert portion of the IBIS AMI model. So there we go. So that's added. Go back to here. Make this a little bit bigger. Okay. I'll need to delete that one. Bring this over to here. All right, so now I just need to reconnect everything. And finally, there we go. Okay, so we have tap weight and the config select coming in um, into our function block here. Tap weight's coming out into the FFE. So that's all good to go now. Go back up, back up. So now that we've uh, done everything we needed to do for the FFE, we can now uh, set up the jitter. To do that, we will go back into the configuration block, back into the Certes IBIS AMI model uh, manager, and go to each of the uh, jitter settings. You want to click on the transmitter random jitter and click edit. And what we're going to do here is we're going to set it up so we can have a range of values. Let's quickly copy this and format range. Um, we'll have it default to zero, the minimum value is zero, and the maximum value is that. Add zero to the current value as well. Um, so that's that one down, two to go. Uh, the other two are going to be done the exact same way. Okay. Now everything's set up, jitter is done, FF, the uh, feed forward equals, uh, equalizer is all set up and ready to go. We are ready to simulate. So I'm going to come up here and hit run. Um, as it's running, it's first going to initialize everything and uh, an eye diagram will pop up. So you can see the eye diagram live as the simulation is running. So hit run. And we can watch it. So now that the simulation is done, we can take a look at some of these results. Make this a little bit bigger, to, easier to see. Uh, so it, you can see it plots the pulse response and the waveform, statistical eye, and another report. And then down here at the bottom is the tom, time domain eye and the time domain metrics. And you may observe a difference between the statistical and time domain waveforms. 
uh, in the time domain simulation, the effects of symbol encoding to control ISI and also real-time DFE behavior may contribute to improved performance. Uh, conversely, statistical simulation utilizes uh, frequency domain convolution rather than symbol by symbol stimulus. It does not include the effects of symbol encoding or uh, single signal conditioning by a DFE. So, uh, so now that we've looked at our results, we can now um, export everything to a uh, signal integrity toolbox. First, we're going to go to configuration, open Certi's IBIS AMI manager, uh, so we can export the IBIS AMI, mo IBIS AMI models to use uh, in signal integrity toolbox. So I already set all this up. All you got to do is hit export. We can then use the models in signal integrity toolbox. Okay, so now that we've exported the IBIS AMI model, close, open up Signal Integrity Link so we can export this IBIS AMI model uh, to Signal Integrity Toolbox. So give it a name, my USB 4. All we gotta do is click the button, create serial link project. After a few seconds, you see it gives you a log file just to tell it to you what exactly it did. Hit close. And now that's all done, you can see that it creates a project for us. It puts the two, uh, the TX and the RX, right in the middle of our schematic here, and it just puts a lossy transmission line in here as well. Um, so what we're going to do real quick is just going to run a simulation. I'm going to set the traces to vary from two, four, six, and eight inches. So I can run a quick simulation. So we're gonna see if everything works correctly, just to make sure our IMS AMI models are functioning as we expect them to. So set everything up, set the trace lengths to what they, two to eight inches. I'm gonna hit uh, the simulate button up there, save it. I'm gonna run everything in parallel. I have four cores on my CPU, and I'm going to run four simulations. I'm going to basically just going to run one pass. Hit run. Wait a couple minutes until it's done. Okay, so now that the simulation is done running, let's take a look at some results. So, uh, results that we're going to look at are they're going to be in the Signal Integrity Viewer app. If you look down here at the bottom, we have three tabs network statistical and time domain. So let's uh, plot real quick some insertion loss plots. So I'm gonna uh, grab all four of these, right click, S parameters and DB, insertion loss, differential. I'm gonna take a quick look at all these. Okay, nothing terribly exciting. It's just uh, some varying trace lengths. So let's take a look at the uh, statistical BER plot. So I'm going to add a new display real quick. Um, now we're going to look at one show BER. <clears throat> so wait for this to pop up, see if we got an open eye. And we do. So there you go. So that's the uh, statistical BER plot. And now we'll look at the time domain persistent eye. The other thing you can do instead of right clicking display or to add a new display, you can just check this box to create a new one every time you plot something. So now we'll just look at the persistent BER, so the time domain um, eye diagram, so there's that. So you can see, um, got the three tabs down here, we can look at uh, various things, uh, and like I said, nice wide open eye diagrams. So it looks like this, uh, this IBIS AMI model is performing as expected, if we had any issues, we could come back and export it back into uh, Simulink. We just come here, click the import serial link project. So we would um, actually hit refresh first, and it just updates to what you know, to our project here in Signal Integrity Toolbox. Check off what we want to send back to Simulink, and then you just click the import serial link project, and then you can uh, address any issues in Simulink that may have 
arisen in uh, Signal Integrity Toolbox. So in summary, uh, we started off in Surdy's Designer app to lay the groundwork for the USB 4 V2 IBIS AMI model. Then we moved the model to Simulink where we, we were able to fine tune the model for jitter and feed forward equalization. Uh, then we moved to Signal Integrity Toolbox where we used the IBIS AMI model uh, on a simple channel just to make sure it works as intended. And had there been any issues with the model, uh, we could bring everything back into Simulink to address any problems there. Um, if you want to learn more about Surtees and Signal Integrity solutions for MathWorks, you can uh, look over the Surtees and Signal Integrity product and documentation pages uh, for both of those toolboxes and try the various examples there. Uh, you can check out the IBIS AMI discovery page uh, to learn more about the ins and outs of IBIS AMI models. And finally, you can check out the videos page and watch the Surtees and Signal Integrity videos there. Uh, thank you very much. In just a minute, we'll start the Q&A portion of the webinar.